Okay, today's topic is 10.3 composite functions found on pages 499 to 509 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is the same as the last two lessons, demonstrating an understanding of operations on and compositions of functions. And our lesson objectives is to learn what the composite of two functions actually is, to learn how to find the composite of two distinct functions, to learn how to find the restrictions on a composite function, and to be able to sketch a composite function. So function composition is when you take one function and you substitute it into another function. And the way that we write this is h of x, this is our new function, is going to be f of g of x, or sometimes written as f circle g of x. Now don't get this confused with multiplying. This is not multiplying. This is an open circle. And so if you see notation like this, you see the open circle, that is different than f dot g of x, okay? In English, you take your g of x function, which is the inside function, and plug it into every x that you see in your f of x function, which is the outside function. So example, it says if f of x equals absolute value of x and g of x equals x plus 1, find f of g of x, find g of f of x, and find f of g of negative 6. So f of g of x would be, if you want to do it the long way, and I, I would suggest this to, when you get started, we're going to find f of x plus 1. We're just going to make a substitution for g of x is going to be x plus 1 because g of x is equal to x plus 1. And that means in our f function or f of x function, we're going to put in x plus 1 instead of x. So that means that we're looking at f of g of x equaling absolute value of x plus 1. Now g of f of x is opposite, so we're going to find g of absolute value of x. And since g of x is x plus 1, Instead of this x, we're going to put in the absolute value of x. So g of f of x equals absolute value of x plus 1. And if we need to actually evaluate that function, if we are finding f of g of negative 6, we could plug in g of negative 6. So if we found g of negative 6, that would be negative 6 plus 1, which makes it negative 5. And if we then find f of negative 5, that makes it the absolute value of negative 5, which is just regular 5. So once again, the domain of your composite function is going to be the common domain in both your original functions. And your range will be best found if you look at the graph of the composite function. So for example, given f of x and g of x, find g of f of x and state the domains for f of x, g of x, and g of f of x. So here are our two original functions, f of x equaling root x minus 1. So if we're going to find the domain for this one, I would say that we have to remember that we cannot have negatives underneath the root sign. So any number that we plug in for x has to give an answer that's 0 or positive. So that means that x is going to be greater than or equal to 1. And this function has x e r as our um, domain because you could plug in any number for x whatsoever and get an answer. Now, we need to find g of f of x. g of f of x means that we take at the f of x function and we plug it into our g of x function. So since our, we can write it this way, we can find g of x minus, the square root of x minus 1, which makes that negative square root of x minus 1 squared, which is a negative x minus 1 which you could write as negative x plus 1. Now, g of f of x looks like it's just a plain old line, but it, within our domain, our final domain has to take into account our two original domains. So although this looks like just a plain old line with a, with a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of negative 1, our domain for this thing has to be the combined or the common domain between these two things, so its domain will only be x is greater than or equal to 1. So when sketching a composite function and using the table of values method, you start by plugging in your x values into the innermost function, evaluating, and then plugging that number into your outermost function before plotting it. So if we're given f of x equals absolute value of x and g of x equals x plus 1, find f of g of x, graph it, and state its domain and range. So when we see f of g of x, that means if we're going to do table of values, we're going to plug in numbers into our g of x function and find out what we get. So if we plug in, oh, like a negative 2, we get an answer of negative 1. 
if we plug in a negative one, we get an answer of zero. If we plug in a zero, we get an answer of positive one. If we plug in a one, we get an answer of two. And if we plug in a two, we get an answer of three. So we're just going up by one every time. Now, since this is a composite function, the next thing we're gonna do is take our, these answers for g of x and we plug them into f of x. So if f of x, we're gonna plug new answers into f of x and those are gonna be negative one. Well, if we plug in negative one to absolute value of x, we get a positive one. Plug in a zero, we get a zero. We plug in a one and we get a one. We plug in a two, we get a two and we plug in a three, we get a three. So what we end up with is um, plugging in our original x values, which are these ones right here. At x equals negative two, we actually get a final answer of positive one. If we plug in a negative one into our innermost function, we get a final answer of zero. And if we plug in a zero, we get a final answer of one. If we plug in a one, we get a final answer of two. And if we plug in a two, we get a final answer of three. So it just looks like an absolute value function that we've talked about for the duration of this entire course. So if we were to find f of g of x, we find that it's going to be absolute value of x plus one, which is exactly what we've drawn here. We've drawn a function that is one unit to the left, shifted one unit to the left, and it's an absolute value function. So in summary, Function composition is when you substitute an entire function into another function. It can be written as h of x equaling f of g of x or f circle g of x. Remember, this is not multiplying when the circle, it's an open circle. When considering the domain of the composite function, you must take into account the domain of the two original functions. And the range is best found by examining the graph of the composite function. It can also be determined by examining what your result is after plugging in various numbers from your domain. So that's if you need to find your range and you don't want to sketch the graph, pick numbers from your domain, see if there's a, a, a pattern and if the numbers are getting really, really big or really, really small, or if there's things that that domain cannot equal, et cetera, et cetera. When graphing a composite function, you should plug X values into your innermost function, then evaluate and plug those numbers into your outermost function. You could also substitute the innermost function into the outermost function first, and then plug X values into your result. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. So your assignment, pages 507 to 509, good luck and we'll see you in class.